Okay, so we're going to look at the cane varieties. So the group is the cane varieties. So these can grow quite tall. Some of them can grow like two and a half, three meters tall in the right conditions. So these are very definitely not what you would consider to be begonias. You look at them and begonia is not the word that pops into your head. So I'm going to start with Listada. So I'll show you first of all what it looked like 12 months ago and then we can have a look at what it looks like now. So I'll try and hold this out in front if I can. It's uh, And I've got long arms but they're not quite that long. So I absolutely love this one. So what I've done here, rather than kind of grow it up a cane, and it's, it's more to do with accident rather than by design, but rather than grow it up a cane, I've just let it trail and kind of flop over. And I think it looks quite nice like that. I'm a bit of an issue with it getting a bit top heavy and tippling it over, but I found a way around it. As long as I support the trailing bit, I think it looks quite nice. Now all these cane type begonias can actually be pruned back. So if I get to a point that that trailing stem there gets too long and I don't know what to do with it, I can cut it back and then any new growth that comes I can actually start running it up a cane and trying to get it upright and see if that will be a nice way of growing it. So you can see it has like this streak of yellow down the centre. I think it's really, really attractive. I know it's not, again, it's not everyone's cup of tea, but I think that would look really, really nice grown up a cane. So that is Listada. This is one that even though it can go down to 12 degrees, 10 degrees Celsius, maybe even lower, it doesn't like to. I've kept it in the warm side of the greenhouse because when it was in the cooler side, by about January time, it was suffering. It really didn't like it, but it's come back really strongly. And I'm sure you'll agree, it looks fabulous. So this is Maculata whitei. So this is one that I think many people have seen. I hadn't seen it before, but apparently it's very popular over in the States. So this is um, polka dot begonia. And this was another one that hasn't grown that much. It's a cane type variety. Not grown that much, mainly because it was in the cool side over winter. Same thing happened. It didn't like it. And I wondered what was wrong with it. As soon as I put it into 18 degrees, it started to grow again. So it's really due a repot, I think. Um, these, All these leaves are brand new since I moved it back. So I think we're talking about February. So this, this is about four months worth of growth. And got the temperatures right. As soon as that happened, it was fine. Beautiful red underneath. I've seen these really quite large. You can run it up a cane and it can really get quite big. So I'm getting to the point now I'm going to have to repot it and put something in there. So that's Maculata whitei, a cane type variety. Okay, now we're going to the big boys. So this is Begonia griffon. It's so huge I'm going to have to put it down. In fact, I didn't realise how big it was. Um, I will try and give you some perspective here so let's just get my hand in front and show you so it's in ah uh, maybe what's that about 15 centimeter pot and the whole thing is probably let's go back to imperial probably about two foot tall so i would say that's about 50 centimeters in total um, it really is a beautiful plant. It's, a, it's one of the nicest foliage plants I've seen. Now, this one was an exception for me in that it did bloom and the blooms were remarkably unremarkable. They were not what I would consider worth keeping. I've already shown you some of the others when they were in bloom and they were fabulous. This one wasn't one, but I think it doesn't need it. It's such a beautiful form of plant. It is a cane variety, but if we get in there, I'll try and get in there if I can. Um, try not to snap anything off but if you get in there to where the stems are you can see they're really quite thick fleshy stems and they have this like I, I think it looks like giraffe patterning on it uh, but it's really quite attractive and again underneath you've got all this kind of bronzy thing going on so much patterning in there a really beautiful plant and I can in fact, just like I've said before, with all the cane varieties, I can actually prune it back and it will, it will re-sprout. Uh, this was another one, didn't like it down to 12 degrees for very long, that leaf. 
needs to come off. You do occasionally lose some leaves with these things, but this one's growing so strongly, it really doesn't mind. There's always a new leaf coming on it. I'll just snap that off. There we go, I think I've snapped another one off somewhere, never mind. So I found that as far as watering goes, um, they like to stay dry. All the begonias like to stay dry for most of the time, but when you do water them, give them a really, really good water. Obviously, they don't want to stay dry forever, but certainly a couple of days, two or three days before you water it again. Um, and they can flop. Now, I've not noticed this one can, but some of them can. Some of the softer ones, this one's quite a, a sturdy one, but the leaves will kind of wilt a little bit if you don't give it water. Um, but what you don't want to do is be watering it to the point that it's constantly wet. It will not thank you for that. So this is another of the cane varieties. So that is Begonia griffon. Still on the cane varieties, so this one is Begonia fuchsioides. So I'll show you what it looked like 12 months ago, and this is what it looks like now. This one is actually in full bloom. So if I, it starts off down there in the pot, so if I move up here, and I know it's not that easy to see with all the other things in the background, but I don't want to try and get this one out because this one is roughly about four feet high now. You can see the blooms here, loads of blooms on it, and it's currently, I'm, sitting, I'm kneeling down at the moment, it's currently up to about there. So it's quite a substantial size plant. And let me tell you that this one has even been pruned back twice. Uh, it's very, very fast growing, and it's another one that dries out very, very quickly. And it doesn't seem to wilt. The stems are quite solid. Um, but if you don't put a cane in there, eventually it will teeter over. So that one is Begonia fuchsioides. Very, very nice Begonia. I believe people do use these in the gardens. Um, obviously not over in the UK, but I'm sure they do in certain parts of the world. You wouldn't think that this is in any way related to some of the other Begonias because these leaves don't look anything like your typical kind of Begonia leaves. The flowers, however, do. The flowers are very, very, very similar. And they certainly do have the same kind of shape and characteristics, I'm losing them as I'm mauling about with them. So I've had to take my hands off them. Okay, so that's Begonia fuchsioides, and you can see that certainly made a huge difference in growth compared to what it did before. This one, I've managed to keep this in the cool side, no problem whatsoever. It's still managed to keep growing right the way through the year. And we come to the star of the show in most people's eyes anyway. Not necessarily in my eyes, I do like it, but, well, I'll let you see for yourself anyway. So have a look to what it was like 12 months ago. So this is Begonia luxuriens, the palm-leafed begonia so this one is let's just move on up again nothing like your typical begonia still in the cane group the cane group of begonias and this one is begonia luxuriens just step back a little bit and let you have a look at it so problems that i've had with this one it wilts very very easily i have potted it up and since I did that, then it manages to stay damp for a little bit longer. Still does like to dry out, but it can wilt very, very quickly if the sun gets on it through the glass. So it's a really, really attractive form. Um, I have actually had to cut it right back. It was just getting too big. It can grow up to two and a half meters tall. At the moment, it's not quite as tall as the Fuchsioides. If you just see where that is and move over, there's the Fuchsioides, that goes Probably another foot, no, I'm going a bit higher than that, there you go. Probably another two feet taller than this one, but that's, as I say, only because I've actually cut this one back. Um, but yeah, it's a really nice one to have. It does need staking. I imagine it might not do if it gets really big. I have seen them growing in the garden. Even in, in UK, I've seen them growing in gardens when people have like a tropical theme going on. Um, I mean, we're talking it's rare, it's not something that everybody has, but you certainly would have to protect it in some way over winter. I don't know how you'd actually manage to do that without having it in a pot and bringing it under cover in some way, because there's absolutely no way this will survive frosts. And even though they say it can go down to about three or four degrees Celsius, um, this one at 12, all the leaves started to yellow and it was only when I moved it to 18 again that it began to recover. So this is one that you don't want to keep it cold for too long. So that's Begonia luxuriens. 
Okay, so that's where I've got my begonia luxuriens growing in the warm side of the greenhouse, making that side looking very tropical. And over here, there I've got the listada over there. I've got the silver lace and I've got the begonia griffon over there. I've got the whitey eye down there. Hope you're spotting all these and ticking them off. I've got the mezai F, Nigra cans. Another one that actually I didn't mention, this is the Soli Mutata. That's that one down there. Uh, that one's not doing that well at the moment and because i've not planned for it i'm going to skip that one we'll save that for another day just as far as care requirements that we've perhaps not talked about yet the media that you put it in is quite happy with like a john and number two so that's just like a regular multi-purpose compost you could probably substitute that for a peat free one or a coir just a general purpose potting compost and um, they do like lots of food in there so that's worth pointing out just like a general purpose feed nothing special every week during the growing season again nothing complicated and one of the best things is if you are prepared to have a good look i got all mine from or most of mine from dibley's then you can get them really really cheaply and it's not like you've got to wait a long time as you can see from mine in 11 months they've grown very very strongly and giving me plenty of pleasure i haven't mentioned all the groups so the other group the other groups that i didn't mention there are shrub type of begonias which i've never actually seen there are trailing ones that we do get in this country people use them in hanging baskets and there are also thick stemmed ones that's according to the american orchid society so as i mentioned earlier there are even some begonias that don't fit into any of these groups so a really interesting family of plants i'm sure you'll agree and if you've not tried them well it's almost like saying and i'm talking to orchid lovers out there i don't like orchids because i've heard people say that to me oh i don't like orchids well i mean it just doesn't make any sense it's a daft thing to say because you really don't know orchids and just as you don't know orchids you don't really know begonias because you probably maybe not every case but you're probably only thinking of one particular begonia just as I did, I was stupid. I said, I don't like begonias, but I didn't realize they were such a fascinating and widely varied group of plants. So what I would like you to do, first of all, give it a like, why wouldn't you? But secondly, put in the comments, if you've had a, ever grown any begonias as a house plant, because they're the ones I'm talking about, that I've not shown here. Now I know that's going to be anybody who's growing begonias, it's probably unlikely that they're growing the same ones that I'm growing because there are so many different ones. But are there any absolute must haves that you think I would look at it and think, yep, got to have one of those because I'm always on the lookout for things and I don't know where I'm going to put it. But you know, if it's, I think it was Trish that said to me in the comments, she thinks that if you bought it, the space kind of makes itself. And I think she's right. Put your thoughts in the comments. Love to hear from people. Don't forget to give it a like. Not an easy video to make. So I appreciate all the help I can get. That's it for now. See you on the next one. Bye.